Hugh Bennett, news editor of the political website Guido Fawkes, and also Femi Uluwole from Our Future, Our Choice, which is uh, a pro-EU advocacy group for young people. Uh, Hugh, to you, first of all, uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg now saying possibly able to back Theresa May's deal. A, a little bit too little too late? Well, I think after last night, with, the, uh, with the, the huge scale of the rebellion against the government on Brexit, I think a lot of Brexiteers, including Jacob Rees-Mogg now, see that, you know, unfortunately, the writing is on the wall. Clearly, Parliament, which voted to give the choice to the people in 2015, no longer cares about respecting that choice. There are plenty of MPs who will quite happily go out and they'll vote to uh, hand, over, hand over power to an unaccountable group of backbench MPs. You know, they'll vote to reverse as much of the referendum result as they can. And I think... It is clear that Tory MPs, Brexiteers now are waking up to the fact that you know, no deal is not going to happen. Theresa May ruled it out pretty much yesterday. She's never wanted it to happen. She will always extend the only choice they have now. If they don't want to lose Brexit altogether or at least see it softened uh, you know, to the point where, uh, to point even more than it has been already, then backing this deal is now the only choice they have left. It's the least worse option still on the table. You think we're at, do you think we are at the point where you could lose Brexit or that we will now more likely see a softer Brexit that, than this crashing out without a deal, as it's been referred to? I just want to backtrack on, on what Jacob Rees-Mogg said. Jacob Rees-Mogg is somebody that has pushed for the hardest possible Brexit, a no-deal Brexit, and now he's, support, now he's backing this deal, despite having previously said that this deal would turn the UK into a slave state, which means a total loss of sovereignty, because the, we'd be following the rules of the EU, but no, no longer having a say in Brussels. So don't what exactly? No, 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 no. The UK is a member of the European Union, has 73 of the 750 members of the European Parliament. That means we have three times the, the voting it's power. Stamp so please, 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 please don't let, interrupt let, me. Do you, let, do, you let, do you let him speak? That means that we have three times the voting power of the average EU country. That means that every single law that the EU passes goes through, gets amended, approved or rejected by a body in which the UK has three times the average level amount of leverage. Now, we've just given that up to simply follow the rules but have no say. And now, we're now it's likely we might back that. So who exactly are we doing this for? It's not the people that wanted to take back control. It's not the people, it's not the people that wanted to stay in the EU. This pleases literally nobody. Why are we doing it? Then the reason why we're in this, in this mess is because in 2016, Brexit was four words, leave the European Union. Right now, it's a 585-page treaty, which most people who voted for Brexit do not like. The only logical situation is, given that we signed a blank check in 2016, 2016, given that now it's been filled in and people do not <coughs> like it, people should be the ones who judge whether or not that's good enough for the future of our country, not the politicians. Hmm. Uh, Hugh, what do you think about this idea of the, the indicative votes? Do you think this is the best way forward? Um, well, I mean, first, let me just pick up on something there. You know, if you don't want to leave with a 585-page treaty, then you could leave with no deal. But Jacob Rees-Mogg hasn't been arguing for no deal. He was arguing for a sensible free trade agreement, which is what May set out in the Lancaster House proposal and has by stealth undone over the course of the Brexit negotiations. You know, I think Brexiteers have only been arguing for no deal after it became clear that there was no other way through um, rather, than, rather than May's deal. And I think... You know, the, the reason why we find ourselves in this mess where we are considering things like indicative votes is, you know, I think there's, there's two reasons. First is the government's complete lack of honesty. May has just been uh, in, unable to actually be honest about the shortcomings of her deal. Yes, it's not a great deal. It is a lot better than remaining in the European Union. That is still a fact. But, you know, she just hasn't been honest. She hasn't, if she'd actually come out and said, you know, we didn't get everything we wanted, we didn't get everything I said out in Lancaster House, you know, the car lobby was just too powerful, so we can't leave the customs union. You know, we the EU negotiated us from a position of strength. This is the best we can do. Please get behind me. You know, if she was honest, MPs might have done that. But she wasn't, and that's why we now see ourselves in this indic indicative vote position. And the other reason is that the MPs themselves, the Remainers, they don't want to accept it. The Remain campaign has carried on fighting since the referendum, an extremely well-funded Remain campaign. They've got a huge headquarters just across the road, you know, where Femi's based. You know, all of these you know, full-time paid activists to go out and lobby for these things. And it's no wonder this war of attrition is actually... Actually, is actually coming, starting to pay off. You know, you know, after, after years and years of fighting, they have worn down, worn down Brexit, and that's why we Femi, find ourselves in this position now. Are you not a, a full-time paid-up activist? 
Dude, you literally share an office floor with us. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> um, never, never mind, never mind. Um, he's on the same floor as us, and in fact, we've had several jokes about that fact, but never mind. Moving on to the fact that right now, the country has two Brexit options on the table. A deal that Jacob Rees-Mogg says makes us a slave state, which he's already explicitly says is worse than staying in, e in the EU, or leaving with no deal, which would turn us into the only major economy in the world that doesn't have a trade deal with its closest neighbors. Even Donald Trump, when he started his trade war with the rest of the world, he left Canada and Mexico out of it because not even Donald Trump was crazy enough to damage trade with his closest neighbors. If we leave with no deal, we will be doing something that every successful economy in the world has chosen specifically not to do. There is no circumstance in which that doesn't make us poorer. And I don't believe that 17.4 million people voted for either to either be poorer or to end up with less sovereignty than we currently have. But it seems, Femi, that nobody wants no, no deal. The EU doesn't want no deal. The British government doesn't want no deal. Why are you so certain that that's going to happen? I don't, I don't believe it's going to happen because, as we've just said, the, the Parliament doesn't want no deal. And right now we need to make a choice. Are we going to go with, well, probably not no deal, or are we going to with, go with a deal that neither side, neither the 52% nor the 48% actually want? We cannot call that the will of the people if neither half of the country actually wants it. Um, Look, I mean, the, ref the referendum result was clear. Look, it is a compromise. It is not everything the Brexiteers wanted. <laughs> you know, I think when you look at what the deal actually contains, the deal is basically the same as Labour's position. I think it's just, there's just been hugely disingenuous opposition politics going on here. Labour like to bang on about, oh, it doesn't, doesn't leave us in the customs union. Read the text of the deal. It's all talking about a single customs territory. You know, May doesn't want to admit it, but it is basically a customs union. You know, the differences are 95% semantic between Labour's soft Brexit option and, and Theresa made deal. It is a compromise. You know, if you want a compromise between the 52% that voted Brexit and the 48% that voted Remain, you know, it is that compromise. You know, I don't like it particularly, but it is a starting point. You know, it will actually, you know, the future relationship negotiations are still to come, which is why I think Tory MPs think it's so important that we have a different Prime Minister, a different negotiating team who isn't going to mess up the negotiations in the same way that May has. But it, you know, it respects the referendum vote. It gets us outside of the European Union. It gives us the opportunity to actually use the next few years to re define a better relationship with the European Union. There won't be a dramatic rupture or anything. Now, I think you know, that is probably the compromise, ultimately, at the end of the day, which fits the referendum result, fits the situation we're in. It's not what, it's not what anyone would have wanted two years ago, but it is better, it is better than the remaining. That's the point! <laughs> You, 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 you've wanted to remain since day one. You wouldn't have been happy with any single deal that come back. You just you said have, it's not what it. anyone would, would have wanted two years ago. That's the point. No. No, I think no. When you, you look at no, there are look, there are soft Brexit advocates. They are getting pretty much everything they want, and now they are playing politics because the soft Brexit position has always been a lie. It has always been a facade. The soft Brexit proponents are not actually Sorry, are, interested are in the soft Brexit. The They're hard just Brexit interested in trying to politics. get us. I think the hard Brexit people, you know, they have, they have held up principled opposition to this deal that they don't like, but they now see Brexit is at risk of being lost altogether. The soft Brexit proponents, all they've wanted is actually just to remain in the European Union, but they didn't think it was politically acceptable to admit at the time. So it's been this war of attrition you know, to the point where we are now. Now that there's actually what's almost a soft Brexit on the table, they're saying, well, actually, you know, it looks like we might even get a second referendum. So we're going we're gonna to carry on opposing the deal for entirely spurious reasons, because all we wanted to do all along was to just completely reverse the referendum result in the first place. Yeah, there'll be those, though, that will, that will look at, at Jacob Rees-Mogg today appearing to soften his approach and say, you know, you've, you've dug your heels in so long, you and your group have caused the Prime Minister untold trouble and caused untold damage to the Brexit negotiations. It's a bit rich to turn around now at the last minute and say, oh, well, you know, it's not so bad, we'll go with it. Well, it wasn't 30 Brexiteers who voted last night to take power away from the government of their own party and hand it to a completely unaccountable group of backbench MPs. And you've got Hilary Benn, Oliver Letman making laws. There's no democratic accountability whatsoever. There's no process for scrutinising the things they want to put through Parliament. You know, that, that is a ridiculous situation. That you have government ministers resigning to take power away from their own government. You know, if they feel that strongly, then they should back, back Jeremy Corbyn in a, in a no-confidence vote. I mean, uh, I think okay. Brexiteers have opposed them on the issue, but they haven't actually tried to take power away from their own government. Okay, last word to Femi. You're, you're holding your head in despair there. 
you keep calling these MPs unaccountable. Who's a, you keep saying these people are unaccountable. They are elected by us. You call the MEPs, the European uh, mem members of the European Parliament, unaccountable, even though we elect them directly. You call the members of the our Parliament un un unaccountable, even though we elect, elect them directly. Who these are? This is this is about parliamentary sovereignty here. Right now, Parliament is looking at a deal that both halves of its of its electorate do not want. A deal that means we have less sovereignty or leaving with no deal, which wasn't what was promised in 2016. In fact, Dominic Raab said it would be scaremongering to suggest we'd be leaving with no deal. So given that Parliament is in that position, the only logical thing that it can do is ask the people, is this really what you voted for? And you yourself just said this is what nobody would have wanted two years ago. OK, we're going to leave it there. Uh, Femi Olawoli and Hugh Bennett, thank you both very much.